Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add notification to your app. For example, if someone add a product to the wishlist, I want to see a notification at the top here. And if someone remove it from the, the wishlist, it also like this should also see a notification. So behind the scene, I did design the button a little bit. I know it doesn't look very nice. You can add a, some icons here like the share icons or make it similar to this one. So this is how it looks for now, but in future we can customize it. Also, you will learn how you can grab the product ID as well as the customer ID to send it in the back end in the future video. So let's start. For notification, I'm going to use a JavaScript notification tool called Noti. It is nice because it is dependency free, like you can use it without jQuery, without any JavaScript library. So it is very nice. So I'm going to install it with NPM and we will see how it is going to work. So I will open another terminal here. You will install it and it should quickly install it. This is what we have written in the previous video. You just console.log. Instead of console.log, I want to see a notification. It installed it successfully. Now let's check the documentation and how they offer you to add it to your file. If you are using Laravel, okay, that's cool. Like they are offering you to how you, you can add it on Laravel. This is how you will add the JavaScript one. Since we are using Laravel, I will add the JavaScript, but we don't have an app.css.scss file the same way that they say. So how would you add this one? You might be wondering, okay, let's just grab this and duplicate this one instead of, okay, I just copy it again. Instead of this one, I will just write scss here. If you save it now, you know it is going to fail so laravel mix is going to fail because it cannot import this one here uh so what is the reason behind it and it, you know it is not going to find it because it cannot file it cannot find this issue like so the, the way to work for this one is you can use require you may not know this one but you can directly use require here and require it let's save it and see if it works uh, i still get i get some error when you use require, you don't need to specify that tilde. You can save it now. Yes, it successfully ran it for us. And for the team, I'm going to use the same technique. So, okay, we just specified the team. Okay, I'll just duplicate this one instead of this one. I will just add the main noti SCSS. That should be fine for us. And I know like it import everything and let's see if it is working. Some of the example can be found in the types so here is one for success i will just copy this one and if someone add a product to the wish list i want to see this message here i will replace it by this also i will design it a little let's see i will not add it to wish list that's it and for the removing since this function will be called I am going to say this the type is going to be warning because it is going to be yellow because they remove it I don't know you can do whatever you want I can just say removed from wishlist save it for now let's see if it works I will come to my front end of the web I will just refresh it since this script is running in our app if you are following along the video now let's check click on this one you see notification added to the wish list. You can remove it, it remove it from the wish list. And it is going to hide, but there are some other options you can specify the timing of when it is going to hide, or is this going to take more time than that? So for now, if I check the web here, like it is not hiding. You can check it out the options and unless you click on this one, but you can still check the options under the default so a string they have layout team text and they have a timeout which is what we are going to use so for, for the timeout i will just put for this one and it is going to be like 300 milliseconds which is going to be second at timeout 300 milliseconds so that's fine i will save it now the next thing is how you can take the product id out of it uh, it is easy like if you know liquid it is going to be easy i will come to the back end currently i'm just editing here it is not a code editor but this is the button we have so what i am going to do is 
I'm going to take the product ID from Shopify and put it uh, and save it as a data attribute. Let's say I can say data product is equal to let's try the product ID here. Now since this app that we are building is like the basic, you have to learn something uh, about Shopify app development. It is not like real app. In real app, you are going to store the variant ID. Variant ID is like, let's say your shoes has a different color. You save the color as a wish list. But for now, it is just fine to save the product ID here. I am going to say product.id, which save the product ID. I will save this file. Let's see if our button will have that. I will inspect element before I refresh the page. I will just check that this is the button that we have wishlist. It doesn't have any data attribute. I will refresh now. Here you go. This is going to contain the product ID here. And that's what we need. Also, how about the customer? The customer ID. It is going to be exactly the same. So I will copy it. And now I'll paste it here. Now what I'm going to do is instead of this one, I'm going to say customer and you can say customer ID. Now the thing is, if a customer is logging, this one will, will be shown. If there is no customer, then the ID is going to be null. So if there is no customer, you can just notify the user, hey, you must be logging to add a product to the wishlist. Or the alternative is like the app that I was building, it was saving the user, like if the user is not logging, you can save those data in a cookie or on a, like in a local storage, something like that. And then you can grab this and then show the product for the user. You can do that, but I'm not going to do that because it is it requires a little more work in JavaScript. So let's see if it, is work, if it works here. Customer is empty. So if you are logging here, it is going to show you the customer ID. For now, we are not logging. That's why it is not showing anything. So that's it, like now you have it, how you are going to take this one using the data. If someone click on this one, you know. So let's uh, just take this one and I'm going to talk about the remove in the next video. First, it is going to be accepting a customer, this function, and the second one is going to be product ID. That's fine. Now, when I call this function, add to the wish list, I am going to say customer and let's say id i just say id maybe it's, it is like the product id now how do you grab that id here before i do anything let's console that log oops why it is duplicating itself i will call it this and we will output this this means the button someone click you know this is the click handler as we know we can say this dot class list if i console dot lock this on the first click let's see what we will get i'll save it now i will refresh my page here coming to the console dot lock i will remove all the extra errors now let's click on the wish list here is what we get customer is not defined i know the customer is not defined so this customer it is okay i will just comment this for now not to see so here is the button we have this is going to be our button now since this is going to output the button attribute something like this you have to take the data attribute out of this now if you instead of this you can say this the data and in here right let's say product let's see if it is going to output the product data this is the button this is the data for the product it should output the id right let's refresh the page and try it again you click on this one it says data is not a function because yeah data is not a function because it is not jquery if you are having the same issue it is because you are not using jquery so you don't have access to the data in pure javascript you use data set here so you can say data set product or whatever is the name of it for us it is product and then we have customer or any other thing now if i refresh my page let's see if i click on the wish list again it says like data set is not defined it is because data set is not a function truly it is not a function so yeah it was my mistake it should be data set dot product 
something like this product can be the, the attribute of it so since this is an object I will save it this time there is refresh our page and it should work just fine you click on this as you can see it will output the product so for this one you know this is how you can grab them and I will create two variable one is called customer which is equal to customer and the other one is going to be ID and this is going to be equal to the product so that's it now you get the product ID from here and you don't have to do this one and you will pass it here and once it got it it is going to pass it here then you will have access to this uh, after that you, you can send like the Ajax request to the server and then you pass customer ID and the product ID you will store it in a database that is what we do in the next video now you understand how you can grab them and how you can store them here so next step is to add them into the database now I have to plan the database how it is going to work that is what we will discuss in the next video I hope it has been informative thank you for watching